This meeting is being recorded. Welcome everyone to this LF Energy webinar on electrical grid modeling and simulation through possible a hands-on approach. We're privileged to have two software engineers from RTE who are uh, heavily involved in the possible project here to present for us, Sophie Fresnado and Colleen Piloquen. And we will now with that hand it over to Sophie and Colleen to kick us off. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. I am Sophie, and I am with my colleague, Colleen, today. Hi, Hi. Colleen. <laughs> to present the possible project to you. Uh, we are both uh, software developers in RTE, as Dan said, which is the French Transmission System Operator, or TSO. Basically, what a TSO does is transmitting electrical power from generation plants over the electrical grid to distribution operators and industrial clients. RTE is a major contributor to Possible. So we will start this webinar with a quick general presentation of Possible, and then we are going to dive right in and start experimenting some of Possible features through an interactive Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we will take questions as we go along, uh, mainly at the end of each uh, big section. So feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, Possible stands for Power System Blocks. It is a library dedicated to grid modeling, grid simulation, and grid visualization. One key characteristic of Possible is its modular design. It's easy to extend or to customize its features. And the main goal of this library is to make it easy to write complex software for power system analysis. And we are going to see how easy it is in the notebook. It's a framework that is mostly written in Java, but that is also available to Python users uh, through PyPossible, which is the possible Python binding. Uh, the notebook that we are going to do in the second part of this webinar is in Python, so we will use PyPossible later. Uh, Possible is an open source library. Our code is available on GitHub. We have uh, six main repositories that are released every two to three months through a release train and a bit of uh, 40 repositories in total. Uh, the project is licensed under the Mozilla public license version.2.0. Uh, it's a copyleft license but still well compatible with commercial use. So the fact that the terms of this license are non-restrictive are a way to uh, promote a quick distribution of our software and thus to respond faster of the, um, to the challenges that we meet today in the energy world. Uh, we have a strong and ever-growing community. We use Slack for questions and open discussions. We are more than 200 people on Slack and more than 100 developers on GitHub. Uh, if you want to join us, we will send you every link you need uh, in a follow-up document after this webinar. Uh, Possible is part of the LF Energy since 2019. Uh, in 2023, we uh, achieved uh, the OpenSSF Best Practice Silver Badge. So this badge represents uh, the effort we put on quality, 
security, code analysis, etc. And this year, uh, in order to further improve our practices, we have launched a security audit uh, in partnership with the LFE. And this uh, security the audit is in, is in its very early beginning, so we will keep you posted on that. So LFP projects have a, a life cycle with different stages, and possible is in the early adoption stage. And each stage uh, has its own criteria, and for the early adoption stage, among other criteria, uh, you have the three that are listed here. Uh, first is organi organizational diversity. So several organizations contribute to possible. Uh, RC is one of them, obviously. But we also have Artelis, which is a French company, and AYA, which is a Spanish company. Uh, production or planned production use of the project. Uh, uh, possible is already used in production in uh, several projects. I mentioned two in this slide uh, as example. Grid Suite, which is an open source platform developed in RT for studying the power network. And Dynawo, which is an LFE project too. And that is used in production in RT for dynamic simulations. Uh, regarding operational technical governance of the project, uh, in order to have to validate this criterion, you have to get the OpenSSF best practice badge at the silver level. This I mentioned earlier. And you also have to hold regular open meetings of the technical steering committee uh, with at least five members and a chairperson elected by the members. So we have that. We have a monthly technical steering committee. I may say T TSC uh, in the rest of the presentation, so yeah. And you can join us as well in the TSC. So now let's focus on the main features offered by the possible library. There are many of them, so I won't get into detail for every, uh, each and every feature. Uh, if you have a specific question, feel free to ask them in the chat. And I will try to we will try to answer them. So first, how do you enter the possible word? Well, you can enter the possible word in uh, a variety of ways. Possible is multilingual. Uh, you can import and or export uh, in several formats. Uh, the first here you at the middle you have the IADM uh, format. It's a human readable format and it's the internal uh, model of possible for the network. Here you have um, grid data exchange formats. There are open standards. Uh, for example, the SIM CGMES here is the standard that, it that is used by European TSOs uh, to exchange grid data. So the RT of uh, other countries <laughs> use uh, these, uh, these data, uh, this format to exchange uh, grid data. And the formats uh, here are proprietary formats, but we can deal with them as well. Then when you are in the IADM word, well, the internal grid model, uh, when you have an internal uh, grid model of possible, the IDM, you can obviously uh, model common grid components like generators, transformers, loads, static valve compensators, etc. Uh, you have extensions to store data that are not at the core of the model. It's a way to have a light model because you only include the extensions you need while having the possibility of uh, including many features with a variety of extensions. And besides that, uh, the model is structured in such a way that if you have a very specific component or a very specific piece of information to model, it can be easily included. 
you can merge uh, networks with one another. And on the opposite, subnetworks uh, can be detached from apparent networks if you need it. You can have, you can use the network reduction feature. It means that you can extract part of a network to get a smaller network according to um, a chosen criterion. You have existing criteria like uh, voltage level IDs, nominal voltages, but you can also provide your own. And you have many other features that I did not mention here, but you can still discover them in the library. So now you, ha if you, now you have the, your IADM uh, network, you can run simulations. Possible provides APIs for that. Uh, some of them are listed here on the slides. So you can run load flow calculations, security analysis, sensitivity analysis, short circuit. Um, I'm sorry, the, the first three here we will uh, see in the notebook. So you will have a, a taste of uh, what you can do with it. You can also run short circuit analysis, remedial action. You can run a remedial action optimizer uh, as well as optimal power flows. Of course, we have APIs, but we also have implementations of these APIs. You can also provide your own implementation if you want. And to finish regarding the features, we will talk about network visualization. Possible offers visualization features with network area diagrams that are nodal images of uh, the network. Voltage levels are uh, nodes, and edges are lines, HVDC lines, transformers, etc. If you want a more detailed uh, representation of your voltage levels, you can uh, draw single line diagrams uh, with loads, generators, every, every component you have uh, in your voltage level. And we also have a very quick and easy uh, visualization tool. It's, it was meant for developers, so it's uh, an, an, an unassuming viewer, let's say, but it's, it's quick and easy, so you can check that if you, if you need. And we will have a more uh, user-friendly, let's say, uh, viewer with the Pi possible widgets for visualization that are coming very soon. So all these features uh, of possible are used today in operation as well as in R&D. We have first OpenHAO that is used by Coreso to optimize non-costly remedial actions of uh, several European countries. Uh, Simdesk uh, is a tool that is widely used by TSOs, energy trading companies, grid coordination organizations, and this tool also includes uh, possible uh, under the hood for power flow calculations. Uh, we have far more example production-wise. Uh, I have also mentioned uh, Grid Suite and Dynawo earlier uh, as projects uh, that use possible in production. And besides that, we have also many internal softwares in RT that use possible. On the R&D side, we have PhD students, researchers that use possible mainly through um, Pi Possible to design well new applications. Um, well, new applications, yeah. And Pi Possible uh, gives them access to the features developed in Java. And this is very useful for us because in return, uh, the possible project greatly benefits from the early feedbacks um, of those users who well, worked on operating the network of tomorrow. So it enables us to integrate new features ahead of time and be ready when those features are needed uh, at a production level. 
We also count the ASA and Baltic RCC. Uh, the Baltic RCC is the grid security service provider for the Baltic countries uh, among our Python users. So what's next then? Uh, after all this, uh, well, our roadmap is available on GitHub and update, updated at each technical steering committee more or less on a monthly basis. And I have laid out some of our goals on the slide. So organization wise, we are planning on bringing more um, organizational diversity in the technical steering committee. We're also working on new features, uh, security analysis with more remedial actions and complex automatons. A small grid study application for five possible users. I mentioned it uh, a bit uh, with the visualization widgets. Uh, we are working on a possible binding for the Julia um, programming language. So it would be, would, it would be called Ju possible, so for optimization. And uh, we also plan on working on new CGMS features, um, mainly to enhance performance. Last but not least, uh, the, we put a huge effort on the refactoring of the documentation. We are planning on moving our technical documentation from uh, our website to a more user-friendly platform in order to increase contributions to the documentation. And that's it for this part. Uh, before switching to the Python notebook, is there any question on this general presentation? We've received one question so far. Okay. And if there are other questions, please do click the Q&A button in the Zoom interface and you can add those. But I'll read out the first question. Is possible a proper tool for modeling the distribution network or is it only suitable for transmission network modeling? Well, I mean, in RT, obviously, we use it for the transmission uh, network. Uh, for the distribution network, I guess that you'll have to uh, add extensions because we don't have at the core of the model. I mean, I'm sure there are components that we don't have. So, I mean, it's it's so yeah, of I, as a so transmission. I can help on the, yeah, for the answer. Hi, and I'm, and I'm uh, from the Technical Steering Committee of Possible. I'm just helping for answering the questions. Yes, we we don't have at RT because we don't have any da data, but we have uh, some users that is that are performing calculations and importing SIM data from the distribution network. Thank you for that. Um, there aren't any other pending questions, so if there aren't any other from the audience right now, then you, we can probably move ahead. Oh, one other question. Um, does it validate somehow the data? Uh, uh, we have uh, validation levels. I don't know, Anne, if you want to add something uh, about it well, yes. by validation. We, yes, we, it depends on the format. But for SIM CGMS, what we, the philosophy is to um, not to allow any uh, modeling that is not conform to the standard because uh, we have to force the TSOs to be, uh, to, to change and uh, fix the data if they are wrong. What we do, uh, but what we do for IIDM, for example, is that we uh, we have several validation level, and uh, if you if the users accept a lower validation lo level, for example, equipment, we um, the importer is more permissive. And for, for CGMS export, for example, we, are, we try to be totally conform to the standard. 
Okay, thank you, Anne. We don't have any other questions, um, so I think you folks can move ahead. Okay, so thank you for, for your questions. And now let's switch to the Jupyter Notebook. So this notebook is in Python, as I said, so we will use PyPossible. And in a nutshell, we will display a network, running a lot flow calculation, a security analysis, and a sensitivity analysis. So let's start by installing here. And importing by possible. So it's very easy to two lines in Python, and then you have access to by possible and every feature uh, it, it has. So for this notebook, we will use uh, a study network and not a national network. Uh, the study network we are going to use uh, consists of six voltage levels, all of which are connected by uh, two parallel lines uh, that have the same electro electrotechnical characteristics, same resistance, same reactance for each line. You also have two HVDC line here as well as a phase uh, shifting transformer. Uh, you also have uh, four generating units in green and uh, three loads in red here, one on SO and two on SE. So the network uh, is available in the PyPossible library and it can be loaded very easily. That's it. And so what I, show, I showed here was a, a drawing we made by hand, but you can uh, draw the network area diagram. So this type of diagram displays the voltage levels and how they are connected to each other. So let's see what it is. Okay. So here each node is a voltage level. You can see the parallel lines the phase shifting transformer here, and the two HVDC lines. And on the edges, you have the active power flow that is displayed as well. And if we wish to get a more detailed view of the network, featuring each component, bus bars, switches, generators, etc we can display a single line diagram. Here, we display this single line diagram. So you can see the loads, generators, the HVDC, uh, the converter stations, and, uh, well, you have two here. And you have the bus bars that are linked uh, with the switch here. Yeah, you have a very detailed view of, uh, of your uh, voltage level. Uh, both diagrams, uh, single line diagrams and network area diagrams, are widely customizable in terms of style, labels, and even the way uh, you arrange elements. You arrange nodes here, or feeders nodes here, or feeders here. Feeders are the vertical lines. So you can customize the way you want. Okay, for the in order to learn more about our network, we can display info about information about substations, for example. So here it's pretty empty because those fields have not been populated in the in the example network. But you can also display uh, generator information. You have more information here like the energy source type. Here we are, we have uh, four uh, thermal uh, generators. You can also uh, have the active power target, the reactive power target, the voltage target at the regulating terminal, whether the generator regulates uh, voltage or not, etc. Same goes for loads. 
sorry. Here you have uh, the active and reactive power set points, whether the loads are connected or not, which uh, voltage level they belong to. Well, okay, so you can know a little bit more about your network, well, way more about your network, let's say. And now we know more, uh, I will let uh, Colin show you what cool stuff you can do with it. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, yeah, so now we're going to see a bit what we can do with this network. So right now the network is a, is like an image of a, like some network that we created, but like in real life, the production and the demand is going to evolve over time. And in this example, we're going to consider that we have three hourly time steps. Um, so our network is going to evolve uh, according to these time steps. So we will assume that all the loads have a set point of zero uh, megawatts, so no consumption, except for the SEL1, which is located in the substation SE here. And it will have like a constant set point of 960 megawatts. And for the generators, we're going to assume that uh, the two generators that are on the north, like N and SE uh, substations have a target of for the active power of zero. And uh, the generator uh, SOG2 will have a targets of 960 megawatts on the first timestamp, and then will be ramping down to zero, while the other one will go from zero and ramping up to 960 megawatts uh, in the target. So these are, this is our evolution of production and demand. And we're going to consider that we are on the first time step first, so we can update uh, the generators. So we need to put a target P of zero for SOG1 and SEG, and a tar target P of 960 for SOG2. Uh, we don't need to actually update uh, the, the generator at the substation N because it's already at zero. And if we check the data frame, we can see that uh, all the targets are according to the first time step. Uh, now we can also modify uh, the loads, so the set point of the loads. Uh, here we are, so all of them will be at zero except SEL1, where we put 960. And if we check the data frame as well, we can see that the update uh, took place. Uh, so now we know where consumption is, where production is uh, right now, uh, but we would like to know uh, where all this active power is uh, transiting via. So uh, what is interesting is to know uh, the, active, uh, the, the active power on each line. Uh, to do that, we're going to run a load flow computation. So this load flow computation is actually going to give us the active power on every electrical bus. Uh, as well as the angle and magnitude of the voltage. Uh, so right now the network is as no failure, we will call it the base case. So the nominal case of the network and we're going to run a load flow on it. So it's very easy. And if we check the result, we can see that the load flow converged. Uh, so, and actually updated uh, our network with the value of active power on every line. So here you can see that all the, the lines now have an updated uh, active power on both sides of the lines. And if we check the network area diagram, we also have values on the lines. So what we can see here is that a lot of the flow goes through these two lines, uh, which makes sense because consumption and production are in this area. 
But there's also a flow going uh, towards the end substation, so through these lines and also through the phase shifting transformer. Uh, the network is balanced and uh, it's also secured. Um, now, well, when you operate a network, sometimes there's going to be failures. So, for example, we could lose a line. Uh, we're going to try to simulate that. Uh, it's called an N-1 case because we're going to lose one line. And we're going to pretend that we disconnect the SOS Num number one line, so between these two substations, one of these, uh, we can just disconnect it. And then we can run a load flow again. Uh, so the load flow converged, we're happy. And if we check the lines, uh, now we can see that the S SO1 uh, has no active power flow anymore because it's disconnected, uh, but we can also see here that the, the active power on the parallel line, so SSO2, is quite high. And if we check the network area diagram, uh, here we have uh, the disconnected line that ap appears as a dotted line, and the network, like the power flow here, very high. And actually, uh, the disconnection of this line, so losing this line, is going to cause an over overload on the parallel line. Uh, in this n minus one case, actually, the network is not secured. So here we're going to have uh, some problem. Uh, as like to operate a network, the dispatchers they actually do this kind of uh, calculations in real time and all the time to be sure that the network is secure and if not to be able to plan some remedial actions to take uh, in case of failure. But like if you would want to just disconnect and reconnect a line all the time, it would be very fastidious and absolutely not doable in real time on a real network. So this is what why we use the security analysis. So now I'm going to show you how to perform one and for that, first, we're going to reconnect the line SSO1 so that we're back in the nominal uh, case. And we're going to update to the time step number two. So now the production is going to be on the generator one uh, of the substation SO. So we can just revert the targets and put the, the, the active power target to 960 megawatts on SOG1 and 0 on SOG2. We can just check quickly that it worked. And now we can run a security analysis. So to run a security analysis, what you will need is a network. We have that and a contingency. So it is what we call a failure uh, on that network. So here the contingency is going to be uh, on SSO1. So uh, we're just going to create the analysis and add a contingency. So with just the ID like that, and we can run the security analysis. Uh, first, we can check the pre-contingency result. So these are the results before the contingency, and uh, so they represent the base case. And here you can see that there's no limit violation which is what we saw earlier, that the base case is secured. And now if we check the post-contingency results, uh, we can see that there are two limit violations. We can check what the violations are or where. And we can see that we have two violations on SSO2. It's uh, on both sides. And we're going to compare that to the operational limits of SSO2, so like the maximum admissible uh, current on this line. And we can see that actually on site two, we only have a permanent limit and all the limits are on site one, which is why we have a dissymmetry here. So not only did we uh, exceed the permanent limit, but also the 10 minute limit. So it means that something is going to have to be done so that 
uh, we return our network to a secured position. And the question is a bit what? Um, so we have an overload on SSO2, but we don't really know yet what is happening on the rest of the network. We can see that like the currents and but not much more. And we could be interested to know what happens to the other lines, or at least the lines that are close to S the substation SO. So to do that, we can actually add uh, monitored elements. So it's elements that we are going to check uh, during the analysis to get the active power uh, on. We can uh, add different type of monitored elements. Uh, it, we can get information on buses or branches uh, or three windings transformers. So we can recreate an, an analysis and add the contingency again on the same line, SSO1. And now we're going to add the monitored elements. So we can check what happens on SSO1 and SSO2, because now we know that there's going to be uh, a limit that is exceeded. So might as well check. And also the two lines that go between SO and NO. And we can run the analysis and check the limit violations. So we still have only two because it didn't change. The network is still the same. But now we also have access to the branch results. So the branch results are actually, well, the information on the monitored elements. And so this is uh, the, the results on before the contingency, and this is after the contingency. And we can see uh, all the active power on the lines. And we can also actually see the flow transfer. So what it means is that uh, the flow that used to go uh, on SSO1 will be uh, redispatched on SSO2 and on SONO1 and SONO2. Uh, two thirds of the flow uh, will be on SSO2 and uh, one third on both line SONO1 and SONO2. Uh, so we can also see that the active power on these two lines is not has not increased a lot and the, the current either. So maybe we could imagine that we can uh, redispatch a bit of the flow that goes uh, on this line to the two others and avoid uh, the 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 violation like or at least like use that as a remedial action after losing SSO1. Uh, so some ideas of what we could do, we could actually open the coupling device uh, between the two bus bar sections uh, on the substation SO. So uh, Sophie showed you the single line diagram. And uh, there were two bus bar sections. And if we open the coupling device between those two uh, bus bar sections, then we're going to go from like two nodes, two electrical nodes that are connected to only one. And this will redi redirect the flow towards uh, N the NO substation instead of directing it to the south. So this could actually work to um, limit the, the current on on the parallel line of SSO1. We could also maybe open the bus coupler on the substation S, uh, so to also have two nodes. Uh, we could also maybe open both the both the, the coupling devices, so maybe it could work. Uh, or we could also actually open the line S SO2, and then uh, all the flow would be going towards uh, NO, like towards the northern part of the network. Uh, so actually, there's also a feature of uh, the security analysis uh, with Possible that allows to, to create uh, some strategies for remedial actions and that are going to tell you whether or not it's a good strategy and which one to use and uh, 
which like if actually like maybe e either one or multiple uh, but it's not available now like it, it is available but not on this uh, notebook if you want more information there's actually a notebook about that uh, on our github and now I'm going to give the hand again to Sophie uh, for that is going to explain to you how to run a sensitivity analysis Thank you. Okay, so this uh, part on sensitivity analysis will be a quick introduction to this very complex topic. <laughs> so let's imagine now that uh, we in forecast uh, an increase in electricity demand. So the National Dispatching Center uh, wants to determine uh, its production adjustment uh, possibilities. So one option uh, is increasing the production uh, of one uh, or several uh, of, uh, of, of several generators, and that would be the first uh, example. And the other is asking our neighbors for help. I will only briefly talk about it since we would like to make it another another webinar by the end of the year. So, well, in both cases, for both, both options, uh, the National Dispatching Center will compute the impact of that adjustment in some chosen parts of the network. And this, this computing is a sensitivity analysis. So, let's increase the production of a generator. So, first, some, some definitions. Uh, in order to perform uh, a security, a sensitivity, sorry, sensitivity analysis, we are going first to define the factors we want to compute. And what we call a factor is the impact of a small variation of a variable, uh, typically the active power injection of a generator. Uh, a load or a phase shifting transformer on a function, typically the active power flow on a branch. So here we will we are going to assess the effect of increasing the production of a generator on two lines of our, of our network. So to make uh, the definition of those factors easier, PyPossible provides a method to define the variables through their IDs and the functions through the branch IDs. And we, obtain, we will obtain after that a matrix of sensitivities. So here we start by creating a sensitivity analysis. We add the factors. So here you have the generator that we that will have um, an increased production, and here you have the lines we want to check uh, after this increase. So and then here we will run the analysis. So very simple: create the analysis, define the factor, run the analysis. It's three lines. Okay, and then we get the sensitivity matrix. So what does it mean? Well, how can we interpret these results? Well, it, it can be interpreted in the following way. Let's imagine that we increase, uh, we make an increase of one megawatt uh, on the, gen the generator SEG, and it will impact the line with a 0 0.3 uh, megawatt increase on lines uh, SS01 and SS02. Uh, increase of the active power flow, obviously, and from side one to side two. So that was uh, the dispatching center first option, increase the production of a generator in order to meet the increase in the electricity demand. So let's see quickly, very quickly, uh, the second option uh, that we have, that the dispatching uh, center has, uh, 
the second option is transferring the production, uh, the electricity production from one zone to another, let's say from one country to another. Uh, and this uh, zone to zone sensitivity, uh, well, this feature is better known as power transfer distribution factor or PTDF. And this, uh, it will be uh, the topic of a future webinar, hopefully by, by the end of the year. So what we saw in this notebook are uh, visualization features, load flow calculation, security analysis, and a glimpse of on uh, sensitivity analysis. Uh, so if, if you have questions now, we are ready to answer them. Thank you. If there's one question here. Is it possible to show reactive power by Jacobin matrix and sensitivity analysis in order to allocate optimal capacitor? Uh, we have some factors uh, used by um, used for um, uh, for yes reactive power by generator uh, redispatching. Uh, but we use uh, we use for example what is uh, the the impact of increasing the voltage target of a generator on branches on reactive power on branches I don't know if it is a question but uh, we have yes uh, sensitivity uh, sensitivities oriented for uh, voltage uh, and reactive uh, uh, management. Okay. Next question. Can it use different methods for power flow? For about, I imagine that it is about uh, the, the internal uh, core model for resolution. We have a newton raphson uh, resolution. It's not easy to, uh, to talk alone because I don't know uh, very well the, what's the question. We have, uh, yes, um, I know that Artis company is going to uh, to implement uh, other uh, solver methods. I, I don't remember which one. Um, I, I will answer you uh, later. I'm, I'm need, I need to check. Okay. Uh, there's a follow up, uh, for example, Gauss or Paul New Newton. Yes, uh, Damien told me that we have fast decoupled maybe next year. And uh, uh, Gauss, I don't know. It's full Newton Raphson resolution. That's all. If there, if there are any other questions, please um, feel free to add those into the QA tool. There don't seem to be any additional questions. Oh, okay, so here is a question. Uh, is it possible to simulate strategies like table pooling? I'm sorry, I don't know what cable pulling is. If you want to follow up on that, um, you can type that into the, uh, um, into the yeah, tool. We don't have any, uh, yes, we don't have any state estimation for the moment. But I know that we have, indeed it is, uh, it is, we have uh, an optimal power flow called open react. And I, I know that the core of the, of the calculation could be a state estimation, could become a state estimation, but it's not for the moment. 
if you want to provide the state estimation tool in possible, you can. It will be welcome. And then we've got another one. Have you done any comparison for results between other tools and possible? Uh, Regarding yes. which, which aspects? <laughs> Simulations, for example? Loads, uh, about load for calculations, uh, what we did in the beginning of the project is uh, when we have IGMs, IGM is uh, da data, we have for TSOs. What we compared, it was a result of uh, our internal uh, power flow called open load flow and the state variables values that come from any software used by TSOs for, merge, for uh, creating the IGM. Uh, okay. And we have uh, at RT uh, an internal load flow and we make a deep comparison with it because it is used since years. I think that this is a follow-up um, <laughs> power grid model. Not for the moment, but it could be nice, yes. Any other questions? Yeah, it remained. I don't know, John. What what means uh, a cable pulling? Then, sorry. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> if uh, the person who asked about simulating strategies like cable pulling wants to submit a follow up, please feel free to do so. But I, I'm not familiar with that either. Uh, a connection that is shared between a few buildings. Oh. Or cable pooling seems to be used for sharing a connection to the transmission network. So my answer is no. Uh, uh, indeed, I don't know. Luma, help me answer, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? Um, oh, uh, just another description of cable oh. pulling. Hey man, multiple pro productors connect to a single transmission point. But it sounds like the answer was no regardless. Um, and then one more question. What are the objectives of using Julia and possible, please? It's for the moment, uh, any optimization uh, problem is solved through uh, a commercial tool that is ample. It's really a, a nice tool, but it's closed source for us uh, because you need a license. And what we want is to open possible to uh, to a, a totally open source optim, optimization uh, uh, people. Okay, and one more, what kind of bus types are supported? For example, PV, PQ? Yes, both. We have, of course, uh, PQ buses and PV when you have a, a voltage target to be uh, to be uh, kept. Reached. Yes, reached. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, mm -hmm. And it could be local to the local, meaning uh, the, the bus of connection of the generator or remote. And if it's remote, it could be uh, a shared control through several generators, static bar compensators, uh, VSC converter station. Of course, we, we support uh, complex reactive mm -hmm. capability curves and uh, and uh, for indeed for remote uh, voltage control we have some kind of pqv buses in open load flow 
right? Uh, yes, we, yes, of course. Uh, space tap changer and ratio tap changer both have uh, tapes, uh, tap positions, and we, we handle this as in during the calculation and we have for both uh, regulations. And the regulations are quite uh, several. You can have, for example, for phase tap changer, you can have uh, current limit uh, regulation, active power regulation. And for, um, for ratio tap changer, we have uh, reactive power regulation, voltage control. And I think I don't uh, forget any feature. Mm -hmm. uh, for short circuit, <laughs> a good question. Um, I have to ask. It's the uh, IEC 911. Yeah, uh, yes, <laughs> thank you. So, yes, Colin, yes, you can. Yeah, it is. You can. It's the, the standard one. Yes, en cours about Julia. Indeed, it's just a POC for the moment. We, we, we don't have any optimization based on Julia. What we want is just a proof of concept of being able to call possible through Julia uh, language, as we do with Py possible, call, calling the Java part of uh, possible through Python. Yes, we support uh, batteries, of course, and since so we support uh, uh, all, also uh, voltage control for batteries since last release. Wonderful. And uh, by which method are short circuit calculations conducted? Uh, yes, Colleen, can you answer? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's the method that, like, that is described in IEC 909. <laughs> okay, and then does it support CGMES 3? Yes, we, we try to, but uh, we don't have any real data to to, to have a robust importer, so we only rely on, on configuration tests. But we support it. Wonderful. And is there short circuit analysis and transient studies included? <coughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yes, we have a, an API, but the implementation is in incubator stage. And it will be nice, yes, to rework on it and to provide a fully open source implementation of short circuit analysis. But you can take a look. Sorry, yes. for now, we only support three phase and uh, monophase faults, actually, uh, with the API. Okay, then the next two, I think, are comments. Um, CGMES configuration tests provided by NSOE, and there are test data and NSOE website. I don't know if you wanted to address those at all. Um, I, I know for grid forming converters. So is it possible to model grid-forming converters? Uh, about uh, Python uh, and uh, yes, uh, we don't provide it. Uh, we provide just notebook, uh, open source notebook. I know that we are in, we are um, working with Artilis and maybe they can provide this kind of, uh, of kind of uh, help. Right. Well, you have dot books, and uh, the documentation of pipe possible is quite extensive. 
So yes, but we don't be... provide any training. No, we don't. But you can still ha ask for help if you if you need it on Slack. If you read the doc and you didn't find what you were looking for, the, that's why the Slack channel is for. But can you calculate the load flow for all three phases asymmetrical? Uh, we, as I said before, we have um, an implementation that is in incubator stage. We would like to work on it. Ah, no, it's for load flow. Yes, there is an open pull request. <laughs> I have to review it, uh, uh, but it's quite difficult. And if you need it, just reach me on Slack. It will be nice to talk. Fantastic. Well, if there are no other questions, um, I believe that brings us to the end, unless there were more that you folks wanted to present. Are you all good, and Sophie, Colleen, anything else to add? No, we're good. All right. Well, in that case, thank you, everyone, for joining. We will be um, uh, uploading the video recording of this session to the same website where you registered. Once that is live, we will send an email out um, with a link to that as well as um, uh, links to learn more about possible, get involved in the community, ask additional questions, et cetera. So keep an eye out for that later today. Thank you again to our presenters and to our audience for joining. And we hope that to see you at a future webinar soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bye.